Hello, everybody. I'm Phil Brandt, President and CEO of AIM Employers Association, and welcome to This Week at Work. Welcome to the only show about the workplace that offers you front row seats and a microphone, bringing you practical, timely, and accurate insight so that you can more effectively lead your organization. It's Thursday, December 15th, episode 209. Today, fire that tweet. What is HR's role in social media? How far can you stretch online to protect your reputation? Is it your job to sniff out posts of abuse or safety and security concerns? Whoa, all doom and gloom, right? Wrong. Stick around for 30 minutes, and if Phil and Bert don't make you smile, drop us a note and we'll make it right. Now, I know you have questions about what your role is with social media, so ask them now. All this and more on This Week at Work. All right, great to have everyone back with us again today. With me, as always, is Bert Garland, shareholder with Ogletree Deacons, a leader in employment law. Bert, I love this topic. This is like the Wild West topic in the workplace when we talk about social media. The, the stories are endless. Um, the, the laws continue to evolve. Um, and there is very seldom an absolute right or wrong. Um, I might hear you even say depends a few times today. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to do one last promotion for our Right to Weed program that you and I are putting on together with uh, Master Sergeant Tyler Jenkins from the Missouri State Highway Patrol, who is an expert in drug recognition. That program starts tomorrow at 8.30. Uh, you still can join us by simulcast. Our in-house seating is all sold out. Um, it's going to be a great program. I have two volunteers. Both will be intoxicated. We won't tell you on what, um, but one will be intoxicated on alcohol, the other will be intoxicated on marijuana, and Sergeant uh, Tyler Jenkins is going to help demonstrate some indicia testing, um, and that will be quite interesting, and both subjects believe they will pass the uh, indicia testing, so we will see how that works out. Also, I know we're going to have lots of good information as to what our new policies should include for the states, particularly the state of Missouri, uh, that are, are new to um, recreational marijuana in the workplace. Bert, anything you want to add to that before we get no, started? Not at all. I'm I'm looking forward to tomorrow and, and seeing Officer Jenkins uh, go at it to see if he can uh, determine who's on what. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to put my money on Officer Tyler Jenkins, that's for sure. Um, so it should be a fun program. I'm not sure anyone's ever done this in the workplace before. Um, so I think it's kind of a first from my level of awareness, um, but we're going to see how that goes. Um, I think it will be very informative and I hope our um, members and your clients all enjoy the program as well as learn a lot from it. All right, let's get on with the poll question. Uh, here's the poll question. Again, today's topic is social media. What is your number one concern related to social media and the workplace? And we have several options here. Learning of sickness, policy abuse. We've all experienced that. Somebody's off on FMLA or other types of leave. And social media indicates they're out fishing or hiking or biking or golfing or whatever they might be doing. Um, and the phone rings in your office or mine, Bert. Uh, damage to comply uh, or to the company reputation. That is always uh, a hot topic. Loss of productivity bullying and discrimination, could be safety concerns. And what we mean by safety concerns are those concerns where maybe someone is uh, threatening people or someone at the workplace and then breaches in confidentiality, which can also be very damaging to your company. All right, Bert, are you ready for lawyer on the clock? Of course, as always. I know always, you've had so. a late night. I know you're working hard on an important trial. I just want to get you warmed up. Late night, early morning. I'm ready to roll, Phil. The life of a lawyer. All right, Bert, you are now lawyer on the clock. All right, it's time to look into what's trending in employment law. Lawyer, you're, you're on, on the, the clock. clock. Phil, we've talked a few times on the program about uh, the Department of Labor's new proposed rule on independent contractor classification. And I reminded our viewers that uh, the comment period for the Department of Labor's uh, proposed rule 
ended at uh, uh, 1159 p.m. December 13, 2022, just a couple of days ago. Bill, guess how many comments they got from businesses like yours, mine, other participants, uh, other in businesses who are interested, other stakeholders like unions, et cetera. Guess how many comments the Department of oh, Labor got? Oh, gosh, Bert, now you're... You're putting me on on uh, on the clock here. I I'm gonna I don't know ten thousand. I, well, I have no idea. I'm I'm glad you at least went with something in the five figures. The Department of Labor now has fifty two thousand oh my six hundred and forty four comments uh, to comb through. That uh, these comments posted by individuals and organizations. Uh, that was up through eleven thirty Eastern time on December thirteen. I don't know what came in in the last half hour, 29 minutes or so, but uh, suffice it to say, they've got approximately 53,000 comments that they've got to get through. Uh, just to remind everybody uh, on, on that date, uh, the Department of Labor uh, previously had released its proposed rule on uh, the department's independent contractor rule. And, uh, you know, the questions really are, what does it mean legally for both workers and businesses who are currently classified as independent contractors? Uh, and so this really is going to impact people who are either 1099s or uh, who, are, who, who, who may think that they're employees. It might give impetus uh, for some workers to, who are currently receiving 1099s to file class action seeking minimum wage or overtime payments under federal and state law. So this is a very, very uh, significant change that's coming down the pike. Yeah, I, I would bet this is going to be far reaching. It's real simple if we think, oh, well, is this Uber driver and co-employer or whatever the case is. But I, I imagine it goes much broader than that in the roots of this uh, le new legislation we might see or new labor law. So yeah, really, um, really going after the gig economy there, the yeah. Uber Lyft drivers, the food delivery drivers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but these things often come out and create problems we did not anticipate. 53,000 questions is quite a lot. I'm sure that will be done and decided and we'll have clarity come next Thursday on your program when we have our Washington Insider uh, joining us to, to talk about that, correct? Crystal clear, crystal yeah, clear. Exactly. Moving, moving on, Phil. So I'm shifting gears and we're going to talk about the National Labor Relations Board. Uh, just Tuesday, two days ago, uh, the Labor Board added some teeth to remedies that are available uh, when employers are, are faced with unfair labor practice charges. There's now consequential damages available as a remedy. Uh, two unfair labor practices. The board ruled three to two on Tuesday to add these consequential damages to its traditional make whole remedies like back pay and reinstatement. Make whole relief really is, uh, according to the board, is more fully realized when it consistently compensates affected employees for all direct or foreseeable pecuniary harms that result from a respondent's unfair labor practice. So what does yeah. that mean? The new remedy could cover things like medical expenses that workers had to pay out of pocket because they lost health insurance because of an all unlawful termination. What this really does is it's a new weapon uh, that the NLRB has in its arsenal for going after uh, employers and to discourage unfair labor practice charges. Right now, the agency lacks the power to levy monetary fines or impose punitive damages. So this, uh, th these uh, consequential damages mark uh, a pretty significant change. You know, I've had a few unfair labor practice charges in my day. I think anyone that pushes the the, the limits a little bit may uh, find themselves in that spot. Nothing ever serious. It was just a simple posting um, saying, hey, we did it and we're sorry. But it sounds like uh, those days are changing. Well, we, we did it. We're sorry. And here's what we're going to do to change it going forward. Or sometimes, you know, if you, there was a terminated employee, the board could order reinstatement plus back pay, but now there's additional damages according to the NLRB. So gotcha. the NLRB also uh, has proposed rule changes that are going to make uh, union organizing a little bit easier. Uh, basically, this uh, that in November, the NLRB had issued a notice of proposed rulemaking seeking public comments on its fair choice and employee voice rule, which really seeks to completely rescind and replace the prior board's April 1, 
2020 final rule. Uh, that new rule furthers the NLRB's agenda to really undo everything that the Trump era board put in place. Uh, if enacted, this rule will really add some hurdles to the NLRB's representation election process while clearing the path for employers and unions to more easily enter into voluntary recognition agreements. That means uh, making it easier for unions to organize um, through, without having a secret ballot election. The rule proposes three distinct amendments to the board's rules covering election blocking charges, the voluntary recognition bar doctrine, and then voluntary election agreements in the construction industry. Again, I'm not gonna get into all of the details, uh, but just wanna make employers aware of this. And one thing again, Phil, I've stressed on the program for 209 episodes, every time we've talked about the NLRB, just because you're not a unionized employer does not mean you don't have to pay attention to the National Labor Relations Act. The NLRA applies to every business in this country uh, virtually every business in this country. If you have, uh, if you're in interstate commerce and you do more than fifty thousand dollars a year in revenue, the NLRA applies to you. So yeah. don't want any confusion on that. And I think we might uncover some of those uh, applications when we talk about social media and employees' rights. Yes, um, absolutely. For sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, and the last one I'm going to cover today, Phil, is uh, new. the new year brings some new laws for Illinois employers. Oh, get out of town. Illinois has more laws they, they, they need to manage the effectiveness of employers in the state. It's, I mean, they're already the declining. It's the mid-coast. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So uh, just to keep it on people's radars, uh, effective January 1, because I know, again, we have a lot of listeners to the program who are Illinois employers. Uh, January 1, 2023, Illinois expands the protections afforded what, under what was called the Child Bereavement Leave Act. That act is now called the Family Bereavement Leave Act. That law, as it exists right now, Illinois employees are entitled to use a maximum of two weeks of unpaid bereavement leave for various reasons, mainly to attend to the funeral or alter alternative to a funeral of a child make arrangements necessitated by the death of a child or grieve the death of a child. A child is defined as an employee's son or daughter whose biological adopted or foster child, a stepchild, a legal, legal ward, or a child of a person standing in what's called loco parentis. The amended law, again, which takes effect January 1, uh, expands the availability of this unpaid bereavement leave to cover additional family members now called again the family bereavement leave extends to the employee's child stepchild spouse domestic partner sibling parent mother-in-law father-in-law grandchild grandparent or step parent the leave also uh, is available for employees due to miscarriage unsuccessful round of inner uterine insemination a failed adoption match failed surrogacy diagnosis that negatively impacts pregnancy or fertility or stillbirth. So that's as much as I'll say about that one, Illinois employers, you need to know that that's out there. Also effective January 1, 2023, Illinois is broadening the scope of the Illinois Human Rights Act protections. The Illinois Human Rights Act, uh, this amendment expands the definition of race to include traits associated with race which include but are not limited to hair texture and protective hairstyles, such as braids, locks, and twists. And then finally- You know, uh, I saw a commercial for that in the movie theaters. You know, they kind of run commercial and they're running a, a, a commercial for discrimination on hair uh, before the movie. It was, it was quite interesting. Yeah, interesting. And, and uh, again, this is directly targeted uh, to protecting- uh, really African-Americans uh, who have faced discrimination based on their natural hair uh, styles. So two more in Illinois. Uh, there's new reporting obligations to the Illinois Department of Labor. Uh, that uh, The Illinois Equal Pay Act requires private businesses with 100 or more employees in Illinois that are required to file an EEO-1 report uh, to now report certain employee payroll and diversity information to the I Illinois Department of Labor. And then finally, finally, I'm going to cover this last one just in a quick, quick couple words here. The new year uh, brings in changes to Illinois' One Day Rest in Seven Act. 
that original act uh, provided that employers must permit employees who work seven and a half continuous hours or longer, at least 20 minutes for a meal period beginning no later than five hours after the start of the work period. The am amendment now delineates between the rest periods for those who work seven and a half hours and for those who work for seven and a half continuous hours or longer. So mm. what that really means is, mm -hmm. is that the employer's obligation to provide employees who work exactly seven and a half hours, at least 20 minutes for a meal period, beginning no later than five hours after the start of the work period, that remains intact. Employees who work in excess of seven and a half continuous hours are entitled to an additional 20 minute meal period for every additional four and a half continuous hours work. This also expands the penalties for non-complying employers. So that's- I'm gonna use that at home on Saturday when my wife was putting me to work outside in the yard. I'm, I need my, <laughs> my meal break, 20 Phil, minutes. Phil, Phil, you live in Missouri. Oh, yes. thanks for that reminder, Bert. All right. All right. <laughs> Hey, that is lawyer on the clock. I mean, where else do you get that great information? Bert, I know our members in Illinois absolutely appreciate that. They struggle with these new legislations that come down. Um, feels like in waves to them. Um, but I think that bereavement policy is one that uh, probably needs to be looked at to make sure our working and break policies, uh, probably as well as I'm listening to what you're you're saying probably need to be reviewed and refreshed effective January 1 of 2023. That's right. right. That is lawyer on the clock. All right. Social media, fun topic. Let's kick it off with a little bit of fun on Filbert's Forum. You've just entered Filbert's Forum, where we peel the onion back and take a lighter look at the workplace. All right, Bert. So we just have some fun memes to kind of get ourselves warmed up and going. And um, many of our employers, um, I talk with them and they're tempted, they want to, they have seen someone's Facebook and they wanna take employment action, whether to hire, not hire, fire. We're gonna talk about that, but this is quite a funny one. And the guy's sitting there going, there's no way you're going to get this job. Um, and that's probably a good lesson I try to help my kids with as it relates to social media. And they think I'm just way outside the norm. Um, but nevertheless, I know those run across your plate. Uh, I wonder what Facebook employees do to waste time. That is a, a good one. Maybe they don't waste time. Um, do we think Facebook employees use Facebook? Probably <laughs> most of them do. Probably. Probably do, right? All right, let's go here. Oh, Taco Bell. I'm not going to Taco Bell anymore, but I will say I do like a little midnight stop through the drive through at Taco Bell. Employees fired from Taco Bell for licking shells. Um, I'm always afraid what people are doing in restaurants as it relates to the food that we eat. Next one there, producer Nick, now hiring full or part-time Monday through Thursday, must be able to work an entire shift without cell phone or social media. That is probably going to not get very many applicants right there. You got to find a way to do that. But there are places where there is no phone time. You're not allowed to bring your phone in uh, or social media is uh, excluded, but a Phil, good one. Phil, I'm just looking at that. Doesn't it look like that sign's been ripped down a few times and taped back up there a few times? <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's, it's definitely got uh, some rip tears in the corners there. So up with scotch tape on the glass. Um, Quite funny. You know, I did see a sign the other day traveling to Indianapolis and it said, now hiring, um, no interviews required. <laughs> now hiring, no interviews required. So they basically, you, you submit your application and they will either hire you or not hire you based upon your application. Perfect. Um, interesting. All right, uh, producer Nick, is that the last one? Yes, it is. All right. So a little bit of fun there. Get us warmed up. Let's take a look at what everyone's concerns are as it relates to our poll question. And then let's get into some of the nitty gritty here, Bert. What we got for poll questions, producer Nick? There we go. All right. So if we look at the results, it looks like, uh, is it the leading result is uh, breaches and confidentiality? Is that number one? No, damage to reputation. That's damage exactly, to reputation. What, I was, exactly yeah, what I was expecting. Well, we have a tie, actually. We have a tie oh, okay. for loss of productivity and damage to reputation. 
Yeah. And I, I would think confidentiality and reputation um, can be even more harmful than productivity, but those answers do not re, uh, really bother me or surprise me. The bullying and discrimination is probably the most common, I would bet, in one way or another um, than the other three. But uh, all three of those carry a lot of weight. So, Bert, let's talk well, about it, some it, of these it, things. Phil, yeah, let's look at that because, I mean, it is, you know, for the most part, almost divided in quarters. Our listeners are are pretty close to 25% on each one of these. And, uh, but, but I, I'm not surprised by the damage to reputation, just with, uh, I, even though I hate the term uh, going viral, uh, we know with social media, how rapidly information and misinformation can be spread and uh, damage to the reputation can be sometimes unrecoverable. Oh, absolutely. It's um, it absolutely can damage a company's reputation. It can cost people their jobs, their livelihoods, um, it, it's it's not a joke, and I know we'll make a little bit of light of it today as as we smile and try and you know keep it light as we head into holidays here. But it's definitely serious. Um, it does cause a loss of productivity. Um, people are on their social media feeds very frequently. I see it here even at AIM. You know, before a meeting starts, people are sitting around on a phone, and and I can see they're they're on social media of one type or another. Now. Bert, my employees would tell you they're all doing their job, right? Because social media is part of what we do also for uh, our jobs to engage our members. Uh, but nevertheless, productivity is, is a loss. I do want to just look at some of the comments that we have here as we kick things off. We, you know, Dave is just our friend, Dave. We'd love to see Dave. It was great to see him at the holiday party, uh, give him a kind of a squeeze. But he, he social media just makes people... Uh, a little bit uh, silly. I'm going to, I'm paraphrasing. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah, but it, they, I agree with you, Dave. It does, um, it makes it a mindless activity. Um, and then Julie does have uh, a really good concern as we talked about damage to reputation and so forth. Um, she works at a hospital and loss of confidence in patients and communities, seeing the actions of staff members and a lack of professionalism. So, you know, if you're seeing staff members on social media while at work, uh, or they're posting things while they work, or they're, you know, telling you about things that aren't appropriate at work, and it's, you know, the secrecy of a hospital or a doctor's office where you expect nothing but the attention on your care, um, I could definitely see um, Julie's concerns there. All right, Bert, let's start with what rights do employers have when it comes to social media? Well, the em employers have the right to really, again, do whatever they want to do with respect to social media. But just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And the concern I have with employers being out on social media, looking at what their employees may be doing is that the employer then is armed with information that it can't unlearn. And that information may impact such things as, uh, you know, talking about our program tomorrow on right to weed, it may impact such things as employees lawful off duty conduct for which many states, several states uh, have laws that you can't discipline or discriminate against employees based on their lawful off duty conduct. But you also may learn things related to the employee's age uh, that you might not otherwise know. Uh, you might learn things with respect to the employee's uh, disabilities or abilities that you might not otherwise know. You might learn things uh, related to the employee's religious practices. Um, and, and so those are the types of things. Once you as the employer are armed with that knowledge, and if you are in a situation where you need to take adverse action against the employee, if the employee is aware that you are aware of their conduct out on social media, as it relates to religion, age, uh, disability, uh, lawful use of uh, products outside the workplace, they have a potential claim against you as the employer uh, that your decisions are based on what you learned on social media. OK, so so that's sort of one side of the equation. So, Bert, let's uh, let's that leads us right into a question Paul is asking, and he's saying, am I obligated to investigate a questionable post? And his key word there, I think, is questionable post brought to me by an employee about another employee. In other words, 
what do I want versus versus uh, need to know? What do I want to know versus what I need to know? And well, this so, happens all the time. Someone will come in and go, did you see so-and-so employees post on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it might be? So if the post relates to work itself, then yes, I think that the employer uh, has an obligation to look at uh, what it is that the employee posted. And the employer definitely should not go out and make up a fake Facebook account or something like that, fake Twitter account, just to see what the post is. But the employer, if some, if an employee comes in complaining about another employee's social media activity, it should be incumbent upon that employee to provide the information that was offensive. And the employer can then investigate. And again, it needs to be somewhat related to the work practice, in my opinion. Um, so if an employee is engaged, so in, in my experience, these things kind of came to came to me when I was practicing HR um, on a daily basis in my job that people, you know, would say, hey, I'm not going to say anything more than you need to go look at Bert's Facebook page. That That's yeah. all I'm going to say. And, yeah, you know, they, they don't want to be involved. They don't want to be identified. And then the burden is now on me to make a decision and hopefully the correct one. Yeah, if an employee comes to me and just says you need to look at so and so's Facebook page, I'm not going to go look. Uh, so okay. that that is not enough information for me uh, because I don't know what it relates to. I don't know if it involves harassment, discrimination, bullying, or just something that the employee is doing. If an employee is going to bring something to my attention, it's incumbent upon them to identify what it is they're bringing to my attention. So, we, so, so we should ask. We should start asking questions and is it a is there a safety concern is there a breach of confidentiality concern um is there a harassment concern Th those types of things exactly exactly that's exactly right and you know or is it something that's damaging to the employer's reputation or the employer's business or is it involving the disclosure of trade secrets or those types of things if it involves those things that relate to the employer then yes if it starts okay. getting into activity uh, about an employee's politics, I would steer clear of that. And we talked about it last week, the Southwest Airlines case, where uh, a judge affirmed the jury's decision, uh, reinstating an employee and providing damages to a fly Southwest flight attendant based on her stance on social media relating to abortion. She, she, she was anti-abortion. And uh, she claimed that Southwest fired her because of her stance on as it relates to abortion. Yep. And Southwest was facing huge fines and penalties, as was the union. And so, again, it didn't necessarily relate to work. And so that's one of those things that I, as the employer, I don't want to be armed with that information. Right. Now, I think a gray area, and there's one more question I want to get to after this one. A gray area for me can be you know, someone, again, walks in the office, says, hey, you need to go look at Joe's Facebook page. Um, he's posting pictures that uh, are derogatory towards women. And that makes me feel uncomfortable at work. That is a complaint of, in essence, sexual harassment, a hostile work environment. And so even though he's does... not doing it at work, on work time, not on break um, and so on. Yes, if, if that employee is friends with other employees in the workplace, now you may investigate and you may conclude that this is not sexual harassment, but the complaint that the employee is making is a complaint of sexual harassment that bears investigating. So a rule of thumb I, I, I suggest to all my clients is that if you are a supervisory employee, a managerial level employee, do not be friends with your uh, subordinate employees on social media. It is you know, not that's funny it. that you've said that because I I iterate to my staff frequently. I just recommend we're not friends on social media. Nothing good can happen. Now it's up to them. They choose to do it, but I encourage that um, on a regular basis. And it's it's one thing for coworkers to be friends, quote unquote, friends on social media, but it's a whole nother thing when it's a superior subordinate relationship. Uh, you again is is is, is a manager. Uh, you are an agent of the company, and what you know from social media about your subordinate employees—that means the employer itself knows that information. 
All right, I want to get to Sydney's question here, Bert, and we're right up against the hour. Uh, we have a holiday party coming up. We always post pictures of company uh, events such as our holiday party on Facebook. Do I need to get permission from each person or am I fine just tagging them? Um, I, I think for social media purposes, uh, you're probably fine just tagging them. Uh, so a lot of employers may have a policy in their employee handbook that says that photographs of employees can be used uh, for uh, promotional type purposes uh, and maybe social media type purposes. So check your policy. But I think, again, in social media, people are consenting to it. They know that the posts might be uh, out there on social media. They're consenting to be photographed. I think you're probably okay under those circumstances. And, and obviously the proper thing to do if someone said, hey, I don't like that is just take it down. Yep. Just take the, it the down. One, the one thing I do want to leave everyone with is, again, under the National Labor Relations Act, and in particular under the current administration, they definitely are going to be very strict on employers regulating employees' social media activity. And so that, again, uh, you know, you as the employer, you have a right to prohibit employees from posting on social media while they're in employees uniform, making it clear that if they do post about the company, which they have a right to do, that they must be truthful about what they're posting. So you do have the right as the employer to restrict employees social media activity, but that needs to be done very, very carefully. Absolutely. You heard it there from our friend, Burke Garland. He will be live in the office here tomorrow. We're going to be simulcasting to almost 200 people, uh, we, including our internal audience, Bert. I look forward to that. Bring your A game as you always do. And we will see you next week when we have our friend from Washington, our Washington insiders would like to refer to him from Ogletree and get an insight of what to expect in the new year uh, with our new uh, government structure. We'll talk to you then. See you next week, 7.30 Central Standard Time. Thank you once again for tuning in to This Week at Work. If you enjoy the show, please share it with your colleagues. Forward our invites. Share the link, aimea.org forward slash This Week at Work, or follow or subscribe wherever you get your news and entertainment, like LinkedIn, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're everywhere you are. And you can be part of the show. Send your questions and comments anytime to info at thisweek.work. We'll see you next week, 7.30 a.m. Central Time, when we discuss what's happening this week at work.